Well, President Trump has said he wants a trillion, yes, trillion with a T, dollar investment in improving American infrastructure. Of course, the problem with ambitious plans is that they are very expensive and it's not clear how to pay for them. Well, Congressman John Delaney represents Maryland. He's the only member of Congress who was once a CEO of a publicly traded company. He's got an ambitious and really interesting plan to fund infrastructure investment by convincing corporations to repatriate their foreign earnings, money held offshore. They can bring it back here to invest in the country. Delaney is a Democrat. He thinks his idea, though, can win over congressional Republicans, the president, and eventually become law. Congressman Delaney joins us now. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. So will you just explain in a way that I can understand how this would work? Sure. So we have a $1 trillion infrastructure program. It's funded by about $170 billion of government money going in. And when you count other money that goes into these projects, third-party capital, borrowing, state contributions, it gets to about a $1 trillion. The way we come up with the $170 billion is by combining it with international tax reform. Okay. So right now, U.S. corporations have $2.5 trillion sitting overseas. They have more money overseas than they have in the United States. And the reason that money is they have over more money abroad than here? Yeah, for the first time in history. That's more shocking. money overseas, two and a half trillion dollars. And the reason is, is because we have a really bad international tax system. What we effectively do is tax corporations twice. They pay money locally to whatever country they're doing business in. And then when they want to repatriate or bring the money back to the United States, they have to true up to U.S. tax rates, which are 35 percent, the highest of, of, of any of our competitive nations around the world. But we give them an option. We say that if you don't want to repatriate the money right now, you don't have to pay the tax. So they defer the tax. Right. So what the companies are doing is they don't want to pay the additional tax. So they're electing to defer their repatriation of the money, which is why it's accumulating overseas and all this money's sitting overseas. So what we propose to do is end the abilities of companies to defer paying their taxes, which will allow them to bring the money back and forth whenever they want. Right. And we lower the tax rate to make it more competitive with our international kind of competitive countries, if you will. What that does, interestingly enough, is generate a fair amount of revenues for the federal government, yeah. as well as allowing all that money to potentially come back to the United States. We think about half of that money would come back if this system was fixed. And under our proposal, that generates about $170 billion. So that's where the pay-for comes from for the big infrastructure program. So that's just a tidal wave of money flowing from outside the country into the And country. it's two pools of money, right? So there's the, the money that's sitting overseas that's owned by the corporations. Right. That, that we think they'd bring about half of it back to the United States. And then they'd invest it, they'd buy things with it, or they'd pay dividends to their shareholders. Any of those things are good for the United States. They're much better than having the money overseas. But in addition, it would generate federal tax revenues. Because right now the government is theoretically owed this additional money, but they're not getting any of it because the companies are electing to defer exactly. their tax. So by lowering the rates, making it more competitive, but making them pay it right away when they earn the money, the federal government gets revenues, they get the flexibility to bring their money back and forth. And then we take those revenues and we allocate it 100% towards infrastructure. We put money in the highway trust fund. Which means jobs. Which means jobs. We think our program creates 10 million jobs creates a trillion dollars of infrastructure, and it's bipartisan. We have 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans who have supported this concept in both the House and the Senate. So if it does even half of that, right. that's great. That's right. So why you can the law? Look, at the, the key is, you're, you're getting right to the issue, the key is this deal, which is international tax paired with infrastructure. Right. There's 50 different ways of cutting the deal. Whatever the rates end up being, whatever you do with the money on infrastructure, either it is good. It's a double bottom line because we fix this non-competitive international tax system that we have and we generate revenues for infrastructure. Boy, it, you know, if that doesn't get through, something's wrong. What, what are what the I chances? Think. Well, listen, you know, the, the president hasn't been that specific. He said a trillion dollars, yeah. right? He has to pay for it. I think the only way to pay for it, unless you do this border adjustment tax, right? Assume if you do that, then you generate a bunch of revenues right. that you can do a whole bunch of things with. It's got issues associated with it, which is another conversation. But putting that aside, yeah. If you want to pay for a big infrastructure program, this is the only place to find the money. I believe that. And so I bet it will. And I hope it does. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. That's great.